I haven't drawn my own comic for the last three months. It could be even longer than that, but I don't actually remember the last time I was able to finish a full page of my own comic. I'm talking about Air Rider, High School Hero. It's not because I'm sick or unable to draw the comic. It's just that I'm in the beginning stages of starting a business with my comic book. So there's no time left over for me to actually draw it. And trust me, I've looked. Between going to work, coming home, being present on social media, and dealing with several serious dental issues, there's almost no time left to actually draw out my comic. Actually, much of the time that I'm using that would be dedicated to drawing the comic, I'm using to write the comic. Something that I consider just as important as drawing it. Since I started learning about the process of marketing and social media growth and putting myself out there, I've barely had time to actually sit down and draw a full page. Many people will actually give me the advice to just draw one panel per day. Just draw a little bit or as much as you can per day to make some step forward in your progress. And while that is good advice, I just don't have the time. I have energy, but by the time I'm able to actually draw my comic, I have to go to sleep and get up for work the next day or make a YouTube video or edit that video and post it. I think this is what it is. If I wasn't trying to make a living from my comic right off the bat, I'd probably have a lot more time to actually draw the comic. Does that make sense? By that I mean, instead of focusing so hard on the marketing aspect of posting on social media every day, trying to get followers, trying to get eyes on my work, I would be wholly focused on creating the comic book and none of the marketing aspects that come with it. But because my aim is to actually make a living at this eventually and to draw my own stuff and get paid for it, I have to figure out the marketing stuff. Nobody else is going to do that for me. I have to learn exactly what it takes to get somebody to pay for my work. I can't rely on likes or follows or nice comments. Those are the gateway to getting paid. They're not the end in itself. It's actually just now that I'm running this Kickstarter that I'm making money online for the first time ever. In fact, I followed this video by Brian Pulido, who is the creator of Lady Death. I followed the video word for word. In that video, he said, for a year and a half, for a 32 page issue of a comic, what he would do is get people interested in the idea of his comic and pitch online to people or anyone who would be interested in real life or online. So at conventions, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and you would be gathering these people towards your email list so that you could grow your list to the point where when you had a product to sell, your comic, you would have people who expressed enough interest to be on your list and to be notified when you released your comic. So at the end of that one and a half year period, not even one and a half, it would be about 14 to 18 months. So I started in January of last year, marketing my comic book Air Rider online pretty much every day. I made a promise to myself to tweet every single day about Air Rider or about literally anything that was on my mind so that I could build the habit of tweeting every day 
and putting myself out there every day just to see what it actually took to market myself or gain attention online. It's only now that I'm seeing the actual results of what my efforts are, are actually doing. And I know that even now, with as much as I'll make from this Kickstarter, everything that I make from it is going straight back into the business, into making more comic books, into making more issues of the book. Because what Brian Pulido also said on that video was that by the time you put out your first issue, you already have your third and fourth issue in production. So that when you put up the second issue, you're on the fourth or fifth issue in terms of drawing and producing it. So I'm right around that benchmark. Meaning I'm creating my third issue right now. And to be honest, I actually prefer the webcomic model where you start off putting out a webcomic and that is your first means of getting your story out there. I don't want to hold my story back behind a paywall. Not that I'm faulting anyone who's actually doing that. I mean... From the start, I've always looked at webcomics as the model for me to actually follow. Meaning like put out my pages, maybe one, two pages, even three per week, accumulate material so that I can collect it into a book and sell it that way. I'm still trying to follow this model, but it's tough because the marketing side of everything is so time consuming. So I'm trying to look for a solution where I can put my art first rather than the marketing side. I don't want to slow down on the YouTube videos. I don't want to slow down on the posts on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. I need to keep going with those in some capacity in order to keep putting my name out there, keep putting my face out there in front of people who want to, who could potentially read Air Rider. But this isn't what I expected when I started in the comics industry. This is actually really tough. And I can imagine that I'm not the only one experiencing it. I think there's a lot of other creators going to through the exact same thing that I'm going through, but they're gonna quit and I'm gonna keep going. Because think about it. How many creators want to draw what they want and get paid for what they want on their own terms? That is literally everybody. Almost everyone that I know. But the road to doing that is so blindingly difficult that most of the people who should easily be able to do that have gone into animation careers or careers where they get paid to draw somebody else's vision and that's not a bad way to make a living that's not something to look down on or any or anything like that but this road is literally that difficult that if you don't decide very early on that this is exactly what you want to do then you ought to quit immediately and find a better avenue towards making money with your art because if you're not a business person, a social media PR person, a, a data analytics person, and your own agent and PR team, I can't see you making it unless you're working with somebody else who has those skills. In this day and age, you can't just make comics anymore. You have to do everything. Nobody's gonna put you on. Even if you get published, there's no guarantee they'll promote you unless you're actually really good or their top selling book. The top selling books get all the promotion and the lower selling books get almost none. So even if you do get published, you have to push yourself out there, get people on your side. And here's another thing that I think about. If you 
told somebody in the 1930s or maybe the 1950s or 1960s that they could be their own TV station, radio station, artist, writer, inker, colorist, and animator for their own creative work with a device as big as a book that they could carry with them anywhere. They'd never believe you. And if you gave them that ability, I think they would take it and destroy everybody in the comics industry. I think their work ethic would be insane. Meaning, if they had the same opportunities that we have right now, they would take it and run with it so much further than than all of us are going now. It is a mental hassle to have to deal with everything. Being a, uh, a TV personality and an artist and a writer and this and that, it's difficult. But it's also a blessing to be able to do all that. And have a shot at making a living at comics because it's not guaranteed because some comics, some people's comics are just not marketable or it's very difficult for them to find a paying audience who actually wants their book. A lot of it comes down to actually making something of quality and realizing that your work isn't that good and that there needs to be changes to make it into something that somebody will pay for. This is not a video for people who want to make comics for fun. This is people who are serious about actually creating comics for a living and what considerations you need to make in order to continue to do so or to get started and to continue with it. Because it's not easy, but you have all the power in your hands to be able to do it. Especially if you're in the indie comic space or the web comic space. And I'm not talking about webtoons or tapas or those websites. I mean the web comics meaning you have your own website for the comic that you're hosting and posting the comic on. If you're trying to build a business off your own creative work and you're not a writer by yourself you're the writer the artist the colorist the inker the letter you're all of it i truly and honestly believe you're doing things on hard mode on veteran mode you are doing things in the hardest mode imaginable and if you don't think about things in a five to ten year span then you're already not thinking in a uh, in the right direction if you're thinking about things and oh i'll do this for one to two years and then i'll make it big no no you won't those people who were doing it for one to two years and then they just magically struck it big those are the creators who have been drawing day and night for over a decade and then they found their stride and their audience and the success if you're thinking about doing web comics or indie comics and you're drawing the whole thing these first few years are designed to get you out of the business as quickly as possible if you're not mentally strong enough or physically capable or e even emotionally able to handle the beginning years of doing your own work then you will be weeded out as soon as possible to make way for somebody who is willing to put in that effort and it could be for a variety of reasons that you get weeded out it could be that you are too slow inconsistent ran out of money had health issues that you couldn't pay for a variety of things that could take you out of the game before you even get started i genuinely believe that 
an indie comic artist or a web comic creator will succeed to the level at which they have control over their own emotions if you don't have control over your emotions you're out automatically people will find it hard to deal with you you'll get into fights that don't matter you'll be busy arguing with people who are ultimately just trying to distract you and waste your time and while you're doing that your comic suffers it doesn't improve in quality you could be fighting all these battles and your work isn't even worth buying or isn't even worth continuing because it's not a good idea first and foremost you have to decide for yourself and understand from others whether your idea is viable to the market viable to be sold to others you have to listen for people's reaction when you tell them your story or when you pitch them you have to listen on the internet and see what people are saying not about your comic but about what is missing from comics or from entertainment itself can your comic fill that hole in the market can you give people something that they know they need or they want but they aren't sure how to articulate it but you have the particular desire to create it for them because i guarantee you if you're making a comic to fill a void or a need for yourself there's someone else guaranteed out there who has that same void and need for your work it could be a hundred people or it could be a thousand people it could be ten thousand people all you need to do is find those dedicated few a thousand they call it a thousand true fans that are actually willing to pay for your work because you're doing something that nobody else is doing in comics these are discussions that i'll dive into deeper in later videos so that i can help people understand that their goal isn't shouldn't be to make the next one piece that already exists or to make the next naruto or batman or spider-man or superman it's to niche down so narrowly that you hit you scratch an itch that no other creator can do or no other creator is making one piece can't be berserk berserk can't be blame they're all too different in their visual style to the point where the people who are into those works are hardcore into those works because of their unique ability their unique style rendering whatever that only that comic can provide i wanted to make this video to really highlight the difficulty of starting a web comic or a just a, a comic book in general and trying to market it online and be basically a, a whole personality or everything online while in the process of trying to make money from it because if you had the time and the resources to simply sit there and draw and make more comics then you won't have to worry about any of this that i'm saying you you can just work on your comics put it out there and it would be a much more leisurely time to make money um if i was still 16 if i could go back to when i was 20 or even before that when i was 16 and drawing my first comics drawing my first uh stories i would figure out the marketing way back then so i wouldn't have to learn it now 
I would understand what people like and how to get involved in online communities so that I can deliver something that people would like and figure out the story and all that stuff while I was still under my parents' roof. So I didn't have to start now, now that I'm 27, and learn everything from scratch. If you're young and you don't have to pay bills, you don't have to go out and work a job or do anything and you're on summer break from school or college or whatever have you, I would start as soon as possible if you know that comics and web comics and indie comics is what you want to do. Because this is the most free time that you'll have that isn't tied to any debt, that isn't tied to any any existing issues outside of your family or your school or church or whatever that you'll have time to work on your comic figure out how to market yourself and make money and everything that comes with it when i was at that age all i focused on 100 percent was improving the craft improving my art improving story all that stuff these days i have to do i have to improve all of that still but also learn new skills at the same time. And that's what takes up time. That's what makes it go by slowly. But eventually, all those skills will become second nature. They'll become faster to implement so that I can focus more and more time on actually creating the story and building that momentum towards making more money with the, with the work and actually creating a work that I can be proud of. But it'll take a minute to get to that point where I can actually start drawing the the comic page by page every day again. And this Kickstarter is the very first step in allowing me to do that. I remember back in December 2022 when I thought, I think I'll just make a zine and post the collected book online so I can put it on Kickstarter and just make, mm, let's say $30,000. Easy. I don't have to do any marketing, don't, don't have to talk to anybody. I'll just boop, put it up on Kickstarter and make money. And over the next year and few months, I figured out exactly what it takes just to make even a drop of cash online and that's just a little bit further than most people are willing to go if you're willing to go that far to make money online from your own work then you're already a step ahead of 99% of creators most creators see how hard this is how difficult this is and bail immediately and find something that will make them more money than making comics for a living or making their own comics for a living. It's that difficult. And in fact, if I was smart, I would go into animation or I would go into a job that would just pay me for the creations that, I, that I'm that i making. But I'm literally too stubborn to go and do anything like that. I hate drawing for other people. I hate making art that isn't related to what I want to do or what I want to study. Air Rider is the culmination of everything that I, I like, everything that I want to study and and figure out in the art in the storytelling medium. And so that's why I'm making it. That's why I'm running this Kickstarter. And if you've backed the first book I genuinely want to thank you for taking that first step with me and allowing me to begin to take the next steps towards making this a full-time living. And once it's full-time, once I'm going full-time, it just won't stop. I'll just keep creating and, and making more and more. And I'll be that much faster because I'll be making money at doing it and i'll be able to liberate myself of some of the tasks that i don't necessarily 
like doing or need to be doing on a daily basis. So that's the whole point of it. Thank you for checking out Air Rider, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. 16 years ago, a mad gunman devastated the halls of Cobalt High. Now, in a school haunted by the memory of a past massacre, the delinquent son of the school shooter, Eric Volden, must take on a new role as a vigilante when his only friend is injured by a mysterious student with superhuman ability. Outmatched and outnumbered, Eric must face off against a wave of masked enemies tied to his school's dark history. Can Eric become the hero his school needs and undo the sins of his father? He's only got one shot. Don't miss. 90s and early 2000s era cartoon lovers, rejoice. Your comic is here. Take fight with Air Rider High School Hero today. Only on Kickstarter.